What's up, people? We got another update. Draft class, NBA 2K15. This is Michael Frazier the second, looking like Tyreek Evans, but it's Michael Frazier. Uh, he is a three-point shooter. That's what he does, coming from Florida. Um, and just to reiterate, for anybody who missed this the first time I said it, the first few times I said it, these, this particular draft class, all my draft classes, for the most part, unless except for the, you know, the fictional one that I'm actually still going to go back to, but that's another that's another conversation. Um, all of the draft classes, the realistic ones, are made to be used at the end of the season. Like I know there's people who put them out early, like uh, the base roster I used before I went and changed the graphic, changed the uh, ratings, and actually tweaked uh, pretty much every face. Uh, the base <laughs> roster I use was uh, from Embrace the Pace. Um, so he does his early, you know, but I prefer to do mine uh, with the point of having it done at the end of the season so that I can draw off of the statistics uh, that are, you know, that were, you know, compiled during the actual season. So I feel like it gives me a chance to have a little bit more of a realistic draft class. So Michael Frazier, the seconds, actually his three point shooting dropped this season to 38 percent but obviously that's still very good but it was almost 47 as a freshman and then it was 45 last year and he actually took less threes this year than he did as a sophomore but still ended up with the lower percentage so that's interesting could be a product of you know teams recognizing him as a big time shooter and flowing to him more uh, when he gets open looks or taking away the open looks but either way 38 percent still pretty good so, as you're going to see, we're going to scroll through that. You're going to see his ratings and all of that. Uh, this is the 2.0 version of him because uh, we had already made him, but had to make sure that we have the accurate, um, uh, the accurate wingspan and so on and so forth. Watching the Cubs and Jake Arrieta giving up home runs back and left and right over here. Salvador Perez just took him deep, but that's baseball. I don't know what's going on. Wind's blowing out and Jake Arrieta's throwing beach balls up there right now. Whatever, Jake. Cubs losing 3-1. Anyway, Michael Frazier II is who I'm talking about right now. And um, I don't know why. I mean, I guess he somewhat looks like Tyreek Evans. But on the render, he looks a lot like Tyreek Evans. We'll see how he looks when 2K actually does him. I mean, and that's assuming that he makes an NBA roster because I don't think he's an automatic NBA player by any means because he's not a great athlete. Uh, his thing is that he shoots the ball. Uh, so he's going to have to be a 3 and D type player. So we'll see if he's able to to do that. But that's going to have to be his his profile as a uh, defensive player as well as a three-point shooter. And he's shown some ability to be able to do that in his career, but we'll find out shortly. If it's good enough, first of all, to get him drafted, which is more likely going to be in the second round. And then we'll find out if he's able to stick on the team after that. If he's not drafted in the second round, uh, he could be a, um, a undrafted free agent joining the roster or could end up could end up on a D-League team where you'll have to add, you know, some facets to his game and so on and so forth. But you see, I gave him a 65 overall, which is okay. It's okay. It should be enough. Just based off of how my ratings are coming out, that'll probably, I don't know, that could get him, I don't know, I got to see, but it seems like a second round pick. That's what it seems like it's going to be, because the highest rated guy so far I've had is Emmanuel Mugier, which is a 76. He got a pretty high rating because his statistics were at least compiled against professional players, and uh, he did quite well for Guangdong. I forgot the whole name of the team he played for, but yeah. Seven badges what? for uh, Michael Frazier the second, And yeah, so we're going to move on to the next guy who is actually one of my favorite players in this entire draft. I mean, uh, I'm not going to say he's the best point guard, but Cameron Payne is a beast. Were it not for D'Angelo Russell and uh, the previously mentioned Emmanuel Mugier, we would be talking about Cameron Payne, in my opinion, as the perhaps the best point guard prospect in the draft. I really do like Jerry and Grant from Notre Dame, but for me personally, I, I don't know. After I've been really 
paying attention to the scouting uh, videos and looking up where I can find for him on YouTube and then really doing some really deep analysis of his statistics, Cameron Payne's a baller, man. He's not a spectacular athlete. He's not running and dunking on people. He's not. He doesn't have blow by you speed. But what he doesn't have in natural athleticism, he somewhat makes up for it with his feel for the game, his ability to knock down long range jump shots, and his handle off the dribble. Cameron Payne got that business, you know. So now I'm not going to compare him so much or say he's like this guy completely, but there is to me a little bit of a similarity between him and Kyrie Irving, and I only say that because Kyrie doesn't do what he does with spectacular athleticism either. And don't get me wrong, Kyrie's not like Kirk Heinrich as an athlete. He's fast, but he's not. He doesn't have the type of speed that you would see with Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, uh, you know, John Wall, those kind of guys. He has good speed, and he certainly isn't the leaper that those guys are. But he has such pristine handle, and his ability to go to the basket, his body control on the drive, which is able to take contact still finish off the glass off that square no matter who the who the you know no matter who's contesting his shot then on top of that he drops it in from over 40 percent from three-point range i mean 41 percent this season for Kyrie Irving from three uh during the regular season in the playoffs he's made 48 percent of his threes so if you mix all of that together that's why Kyrie is who he is Cameron Payne's not quite on that level but he certainly has some similar type of uh, uh i guess you could go as far as to say maybe a poor man a poor man's Kyrie. i could see i could see that but i'll be honest i think cameron Payne has more uh pure point guard instincts than Kyrie, because Kyrie's a score just m pretty much he's a score but cameron Payne has that rare ability to be able to um determine what his team needs do I need, do, do we need a bucket or do we need me to create? And he's able to do uh, either or. So I really like his game uh, quite a bit. His jump shot is a little bit of a leaning, falling away type of jump shot, but it's pure. So you can't really, uh, you can't really, you know, criticize it too much. 37.7% uh, from three-point range. So definitely puts it in the basket for sure. He averages 20 points a game, six assists this season for Murray State. I'm convinced had he gone to Duke or Kentucky, we'd be talking about him as a late lottery pick. Easy. Without it wouldn't even be a hesitation. We'd be talking he he'd be a late lottery pick and he would have been in the conversation for national player of the year. Just I mean think about it. Twenty points a game playing with one of the top they're tweeting about him. They tweeting about him. You know, playing with one of the top programs, definitely he would have gotten that type of love. But went to Murray State, so it is what it is. Probably wouldn't average 20 points a game in Duke, Kentucky. We're definitely not in Kentucky, so um, we know how that platoon system thing affected people. It's interesting, too. John Calipari said he would never do that again. I don't blame you, John. 13 badges for Cameron Payne, and you'll see shortly his overall rating. I gave him a 73, which is really pretty high. Uh, like I said, Mujie has got the highest rating of anybody I've uh, rated so far. Um, he has a 76. There's two or three guys with a 75. There might be a guy with a 74. And then there's a collection of guys with a 73. And this is about stats. Um, I kind of throw in my perception of the players and stuff like that with, badge, with the badges and some of the defensive stuff. But for the most part, you know, I got a statistical formula for all of the ratings. So uh, sometimes I might even like a guy better than what his actual rating came out. But I'm sticking to the numbers. So that's how we ended up with that. So we're going to be moving on to the next guy shortly. Um, this is a kind of like a this is an all guard episode. Um, as you know, last the last guy was Michael Frazier, the second from Florida, and this is Cameron Payne from Murray State. But next up from VCU, and this is actually a 2.0 version of him because I'd actually already um, had him in as well. But it's Trevion Graham. Trevion Graham is a is a scrapper. That's what he is. He's he's also not a guy who uh, 
has a bunch of run jump uh, athleticism, but he's strong and he's able to get uh, you know get those those uh, hustle buckets close to the basket. Uh, it's got a decent three point shot as well. Shot out thinking about 38 percent from three point range, but what he does do which is really uh, exceptional for a small forward shooting guard. He really rebounds. He averaged seven rebounds a game the last two seasons. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be something that will help him get to the NBA because he certainly is a second-round prospect. I would say he's even further down than uh, Michael Frazier II, and I think it's because Michael Frazier's a bit better a little bit better shooter or probably he at least has um a better reputation as a shooter than trevion graham uh but graham played okay at the nba combine didn't he you know held his own somewhat but then you also have to consider there were some very good prospects um uh, who weren't uh who didn't play at the combine uh that's going to be something interesting to figure out if they'll be able to get past that because I think the five on five drill thing at the Trav combine was a great idea, but I think that it dims it somewhat because you have so many guys that don't participate, you know, so we had five on five drills, but we didn't have Jalil Okafor, we didn't have Carl Anthony Towns, we didn't have D'Angelo Russell, didn't have Emmanuel Mugier, and obviously all these guys are afraid of injury and they're also afraid of getting out there and getting outplayed and they get out there and they get outplayed and, uh, and, you know, it's a situation where now their draft stock is hurt. So I totally get it why they don't do it. But I don't know if it would it would be kind of cool if it could somehow, you know, you could raise the amount of participation and enrollment in that particular part of it. Because I think at five on five is pretty good. But Trevion Graham played pretty well, uh, I remember. Uh, but like I said, still, he could also be or he could be a guy who is going to be. Uh, I don't want to say relegated, but a guy destined to play overseas professionally. Um, his hustle and that sort of thing could get him uh, on the NBA roster, uh, maybe even drafted in the second round. Uh, and But he also could find himself in a situation where he's going back and forth between the D-League team and the NBA team. He'll have to really, really take advantage of an opportunity uh, should one come up. He also got a 65, which is the same rating as Michael Frazier the second. Um, if you look at some of his ratings, you know, he moves around and uh, hustles and defends, which is something that's, for the most part, pretty common with uh, VCU guys. Shaka Smart had those guys. Uh, if nothing else, they were going to defend, and if nothing else, they were going to play hard, which should be attractive. You, you, you would think you might see more VCU guys actually in the NBA over the last three or four years, but... Um, talent is still talent. So, um, so let's look at the badges. He's got a hot five. Scroll through that. There you go. Not much. So that's we're just about wrapping this one up. Um, trying to roll through this as fast as possible. Obviously, like I said, the goal is to have this done by or before the draft. The actual real NBA draft. They tweeting about the draft. They doing it. Doing it. So that's the goal. Uh, I think we're still on track for that. Uh, if I need to start really punching some through, I think the draft's like June 25th or something crazy like that. So we got a little over, a, a little under a month left. So I, I, I think we'll be fine. I do appreciate you watching. God bless. Peace.